Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how a feature is built in a professional software development environment. I'll show you everything from the initial feature request from a customer or a project manager until the feature hits the production environment and can be used by real users. In professional environments, a single feature often involves multiple teams, careful planning and various approval stages. Whether you're a junior developer wondering what's ahead or you're just curious about how software actually gets built in big companies, I'll show you the complete process from start to finish and try not to bore you with any extra stuff. But where does it all start? The feature request. So where does a new feature actually come from? Well, contrary to what many beginners might think, developers don't just sit there and decide what cool stuff they want to build next. In reality, it all starts with our customers or product owners identifying a need. This is how this typically works. Let's say a customer is struggling with their current file management process. Instead of immediately offering them solutions, our product owner first sits down with them to really understand their problem. He will ask them questions like what is your current workflow or where exactly do you lose the most time? And they might answer something like we are wasting hours every week because our team has to manually sort hundreds of incoming files and put them in the right folders. Plus, we don't know who moved what file where. Now this is where the skills of a good product owner come in. Their job isn't just to write down exactly what the customer says. They need to translate these pain points into a clear and actionable user story. They take all the detailed discussion about file management frustrations and turn it into something like this. As a team member, I want to be able to automatically categorize incoming files based on their type and content. The system should also keep a log of who edited which file and when. Also, the system must be able to filter the files by user and file type. The product owner analyzed the business's problem and broke it down into a clear feature request that developers can actually work with. For me as a developer, it's important to understand the customer's workflow so I can also think of ways to make their stuff easier for them. This clarity at the start is actually super important because trust me, there's nothing worse than building an entire feature only to find out that this is not what the customer actually needed. And this happens more often than you might think when the problem wasn't understood and the feature not properly defined. Speaking of feature definitions, let me show you where my job begins. So everything I talked before doesn't really include me. That's the job of the product owner and after he's done, I get to work with his result. Before I start to develop the new feature, I start with analyzing the requirements. In a dream world, the story should have defined every detail I need to know, but let's say that's as realistic as developers having a girlfriend. So the first thing I do is make sure I really understand what needs to be built. But more importantly, I need to verify that it's actually possible to implement it the way it's described. And this is where the technical planning comes in. Once I understand what the feature should do, I start thinking about possible solutions and trust me, this can be pretty challenging. I have to consider how it fits into our existing architecture, whether I need to build new components and what changes I'll have to make to the database. After mapping all that out, I break everything down into smaller tasks and estimate how long each of them will take. The technical planning is actually super important because when I think through all these steps in detail, I usually find problems that weren't obvious at first. Sometimes I realize halfway through planning that my whole approach might not work at all. But that's exactly why we spent this time planning. I'd rather find these problems now than when I'm already in the middle of writing code. Alright, after all that planning, it's finally time to write some actual code. Sometimes staring at a huge code base can be pretty overwhelming at first, but this is where my detailed planning really pays off, because if I did a good job, I should have a step-by-step -step order of what I need to do. I always start with the architecture and database changes. Once that's done, I move on to the front-end work, building or editing the UI components. It's nice to see the features start taking shape visually. With the UI looking good, it's time for the most important part, making everything actually work. I create the endpoints, write the business logic and start connecting all these pieces together. Then comes the cleanup phase, removing all the debugging statements and generally making sure my code is clean and matches all coding standards. But I'm not done yet. Before I call it complete, I need to write tests for my new code. For those of you who aren't familiar with unit or integration tests, think of them as automatic quality checks. They simulate real user requests with test data I define and verify that my endpoints respond exactly how they should. These tests are real lifesavers when you're making changes months later and need to make sure you haven't broken anything. And if you want to learn to code or how to write unit tests, you should definitely check out Scrimba. It's the second time they're sponsoring one of my videos because their platform is just the best tool for learning to code right now. Whether you're an absolute beginner or a professional developer looking to learn something new, they've got you covered. 
They have built this crazy platform which has this unique teaching style I've never seen somewhere else before. You basically start watching a lesson where one of the professional coaches is talking to you about something course related and showing you the related code on the screen. And while you watch the lesson, you can pause it at any time you want and edit the code they are showing you. Also, since their teaching style is super interactive, in almost every lesson the instructor is challenging you to pause and implement the things you've just learned. And you don't even need a local development environment to start. You can directly program everything in your browser and also run the code you've just written. They call this learning style scrims and you can find all the scrims you've worked on in your profile where you can always access them again. And the best part about Scrimba is that most of their courses are completely free. While recording this video they have 71 courses in total while 47 of them are completely free. Their courses cover a bunch of different topics and they even have an entire section about career advice with courses preparing you for job interviews and building a good developer portfolio. So go and check them out for free with the link in the description and big thanks to Scrimba for supporting the channel. Alright, my code is working but I'm not ready to ship it just yet. First I need to prepare a merge request for one of my colleagues to review. This might sound simple but there's actually quite a checklist we need to follow called the definition of done. Let me show you what I always check before I create that merge request. First I run our code quality checks to make sure everything meets our standards. Then I verify that all my new tests are passing and I haven't broken any existing ones. I check for merge conflicts with the main branch and that the pipeline is passing. And if I've built something very complex, I make sure it's probably documented. One thing that's specific to how we do things at my company, we always write down the solution in a dedicated field in the story. Here I document a quick overview of the changes and new functionalities because both the reviewer and our testing team will read this later. When you're working on huge software projects like we do, having these few sentences about where to find the new stuff saves everyone a lot of time. Then one of my colleagues starts to review my code and leaves some feedback if it's needed in the form of something called a threat. If some issues or potential improvements were found, I go through the feedback and make those small adjustments. And after that, the merge request can be merged into our main branch. We call it the dev branch. The merge into the dev branch is automatically triggering a process that starts the deployment on our dev environment. That usually takes a couple of minutes, but once it's successfully deployed, our dev team and product owner can look at the new feature on a secure testing environment. Not the customer though, we're not quite there yet. For now I'm done with my part and our QA team takes over. They look at the story along with my solution description and start thoroughly testing the new feature. And when I say testing, I mean they're literally trying to break what I built. They use it in ways I would never think of, just like a real customer would. And if they manage to find a bug or catch an edge case that I didn't consider, they create a bug ticket and assign it back to me. But if everything works as expected, they give their green light for deploying to our QA environment. Once we deploy it on the QA system, we do another quick check to make sure nothing broke in the process. Then we can finally tell the customer that their new feature is ready for them to test. They will take their time testing everything and meanwhile I'm already back at the beginning of this whole process working on the next feature. That's actually one of my favorite things about software development. There's always something new to build and you're rarely facing the same challenges. If the customer gives their approval, we can finally deploy to production. And that's where the real journey of the feature begins. Being used by actual users in the real world. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it. As a developer you are able to create stuff from a simple feature request to something that hundreds or thousands of people might use every day. And this is it, that's what I'm doing on a daily basis. There are different development approaches and smaller companies probably don't have their own QA team for example, but everything has its pros and cons. I recently started to work on my first bigger software as a service project and I'm planning to make a video series about this, so if you don't want to miss that, make sure to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and hit that like and subscribe button for the algorithm and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.